Okay, so for this video, I want to show you how we can generate a sine graph and a cosine graph using the unit circle. So if you see here, I have our unit circle, our 16 point unit circle. And what I've done is in Desmos, I have started, I've set up some points to make this video not super long, but I want to show you the connection here. So we know that when we're talking about sine on the unit circle, we know that it's just our y values because sine would be opposite, which would be like if we're talking about this angle right here, it'd be opposite over the hypotenuse, but on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is one all the way around. So we know that sine is just our y value. So what I've done is I have plotted these points. So we're going to, our x axis here is going to be our angles. So our first angle is 0 pi. And we can see that our y value at 0 pi is 0. Then if I go to pi over 6, so here's pi over 6, our y value is 1 half. And then pi over 4, our y value is square root of 2 over 2. And pi over 3, our y value square root of 3 over 2. And then up here, pi over 2, our y value is 1. So I'm going to keep clicking these dots all the way around the unit circle. So these are all of our points all the way around back until we get to 2 pi. Okay, so that should look familiar, and that's the connection I want you to make. So all of these points are graphed with the x-coordinate of the point being our angle that we're talking about. And the y-coordinate is the y-value all the way around the unit circle because we know sine is y. So then I can show you if I were to graph the equation y equals sine of x, it fits that perfectly. And it's going to keep going. So we know that because a circle continues around and around, um, we can keep going with bigger angles than 2 pi and keep going, and we're going to have that same continuous periodic function. Okay, now if we go to the same thing for cosine. So cosine, we know, is our x-coordinate over our hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is 1, so it's just going to be the same idea, but it's going to be the x-coordinates all the way around. So my first point here would be 0 pi and our x-coordinate is 1, and then pi over 6, our x-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, pi over 4, it's square root of 2 over 2, here it's pi over 3 is at 1 half, and then pi over 2 is at 0, and then I'm going to keep clicking all the way around so you can see what these points are going to look like. So you will notice that this curve looks similar to the sine graph. However, it's shifted. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So you can see that this is going to form my cosine graph. And if I type in here y equals cosine of x, you can see that fits the points that I just graphed. And again, it's a periodic function, so it's going to continue because we can keep continuing around that unit circle. So you can see that sine and cosine are the same graph, there's just a shift. So you'll notice that sine starts kind of in the middle of the graph, goes up, back to the middle, down, and then ends at zero, okay? Where cosine starts up at one, goes all the way down to its lowest point, halfway in between, and then ends up at one again. So these characteristics of your parent function are going to be helpful. When we're graphing, um, if we were to be graphing by hand on paper, we don't usually graph all of these points. So I tend to focus on the key points like the zeros and your high point and your low point. So we kind of call those the five main points of your graph. So knowing where the graph hits your x-axis and knowing the maximum and minimum values and where those are located. So same thing on sine here, here, here here and here. So those kind of five points will help shape our graph. But this hopefully gives you an idea of where this sine and cosine graph is coming from and how it is connected to those key points on the unit circle. Okay, there you go.